1993, November 17th, and it's a long way from uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis to um, Los Angeles and New York and Paris and London, and somewhere in the in-betweens, Gene Harris, it's good to see you. Thank you, Leigh. It's, it's great to be back. Great to be back. Thank you. Well, over the years, you've been a part of uh, the Minnesota environment, but it all started somewhere around Benton, Michigan, didn't it? <laughs> and perhaps the sound of Pete Johnson and Albert Amma. <laughs> Benton Harbor, Michigan is the name of the city. That's where I was born and raised, and believe me, Pete Johnson and Albert Ammons were very, very important to me when I was four and five years old. Yeah. And that's a tender age to be assimilating a very complex uh, piano star. Well, I was, it was Boogie Woogie, and I called myself the, the fastest Boogie Woogie player in southern Michigan. <laughs> and uh, the public accepted you on that yes. score. That's right. That's right. When I was 15, I, I 14, actually, I had my own radio show back in, in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Yeah. What were you programming? Programming any music that people would, would request, you know, and they were mostly kids that would call in, you know, and I would use my style of playing to, you know, to play the songs. So you absolutely answered those, uh, those requests live at the piano? I did the best that I possibly could at 14 years old. Who were you listening to then? Uh, believe me, I'd already been listening to Art Tatum and Jay McShann and Earl Garner, all the, all the greats, yeah. As a, as a learning device, as, as learning factors in your life, um, how did you... Uh, how did you develop and, and, and learn the process and, and then to, to this day, you've developed a, a remarkable style. What were you doing? I, I can't explain it, you know, uh, especially in a short time on the air, but I can say this much. I had many, many wonderful musicians to help me along the way and to teach me uh, chord changes, uh, different uh, innovations that they were using. And so it, it helped me and everybody I played with would show me new Evan, new you know venues to use, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'm just proud that uh, the musicians shared their music with me. Just one postscript: uh, going back to the Benton Harbor and the broadcast, uh, what kind of music did uh, the audience request, and what did you what did you play, perform, what compositions? Well, I can't, I can't remember all of them. Of course, some of those compositions were originals, naturally, being on the radio. But I'll tell you, I remember one song that my mother always called in to request, and that was Sentimental Journey. It was popular at the time, and, and I played it on the, on the air. Well, it's a long journey from uh, that time to the present. This is 1993, and uh, you've been touring... That was 1949. 1949. So, just a few years between a little <laughs> water over the dam. Uh, since that time, you've had an opportunity to develop a, a super big band, as well as your small group. Uh, the, the, the idea of putting together this big band, did that fulfill a, a long ambition of yours? Actually, I didn't believe that I could lead a big band. You know, I had never tried it before. And it was, was, I won't say that it was an ambition, but I always thought that I would like to have taken the seat of Count Basie, you know, <laughs> get over Count, let me play some with the band. <laughs> yes, I guess it was an ambition. So you really, in effect, uh, created this environment and you did sit in a, in a seat where, where, where Bill Basie might have been. Similar, because well, I had some of the greatest stars, yes, you know, Harry Sweet Edison, all the guys, you know. Ray Brown, yeah. That must have been a thrill. It made my heart beat faster, I'll tell you, you know, because these were jazz giants. These were uh, the ones that are making history because they're still alive. They're, you know, they're making history, and it's, it's the ones that we look up to. And to, to lead these men around the world in all the different areas, Morocco, Russia, Japan, Australia, Korea, you know, Paris, London, you know, I mean, all the venues that we played, it was, it was a great, great honor. When you um, first hit an international setting on that first night with a big band, where, where did you land? Oh, God, I can't remember now. We did so, we've done so many tours, you know, the four. I know the very first uh, place that we played was in New York City before making the tour. Jeez. Um, um, you, you, I can't remember. I really can't well, remember. I won't press you on that. I was just thinking, 
when you hit that international audience and, and, and with that big band, and they, of course, you know, whether it's Russia, Voice of America, Willis Conover, or uh, France, all have been exposed to jazz. Uh, do you remember any particular uh, at a moment wh when you just felt the audience just going berserk, accepting you on fire? Well, that happened in um, almost every place we played. But I think the, 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 the one venue that I remember just vividly was, was in Russia when uh, musicians ran up on the bandstand. You know, uh, they were so happy that we were there. They could not believe that the quality of the musicians that we had in the band. And they just wanted to hug and kiss us and play with us, too. You know? And so they didn't care if there were guards. They're coming up on the bandstand. So it, it got a little hairy, you know, but it was a great honor. Yeah. Well, I know this is between uh, sets, and uh, I, I just want to uh, touch on a few thoughts here. This is 1993. You've been observing the music business and the jazz orientation of the business. New technologies have come on the scene, new mediums to record for. What do you see uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the business of music today that is particularly rewarding? I think the merging of jazz to all types of music, and I don't care whether it's gospel, whether it's country and western, or whether it's rock and roll, the merging of jazz into those musics have made the music industry sound better. The, the quality of music today is great, just awesome. I am telling you there are some good country and western because the musicianship is higher. There's some good gospel because they are now using jazz chords. There's, um, the same way with rock and roll. It's just a perfect blend of jazz and all those different types of idioms. There is a global feel to it all too, isn't there? Without a doubt, without a doubt. And I'm proud to be here to see it happening. What is it uh, that you look for in musical compositions uh, and materials that uh, is essential for you to make a choice for performance recording? It's very important me, to me for a, a song that has been written for a singer or, or just, just a line, it has meaning. It has to stand by itself. If it can do that, then more than likely it will be in our repertoire. But uh, I'll tell you, there are so many songs uh, that are written for singers that they only have one um, uh, one line, uh, one tone, and I can't use that in my music, even though they are very, very good for singers. And so I have to be very careful on, on what type, type of songs I choose. Do you, uh, by chance, uh, uh, follow the lyrics as well as the music, and, 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 and does that influence? Only to a certain degree. Again, I'm trying to explain to you that it, the, it has to move quarterly and move around so that I can make a lot of warm feelings out of the music. The music has to stand alone by itself instead of da 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 da. Now you can say some wonderful words and in, in that, you know, just saying that, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you. But on the piano you just cannot do that. You got it's gotta move around. So I don't think the words are as important as a lot of people think, although I try to learn the words with the music. You indeed do that. Yes, yes I do, because the meaning of, of what they're, they're trying to express, you know, I try to put that also into my music. For example, just one composition that where you, you, you learned not only the depth and degree and the richness of the harmony and the texture, but also the lyric as well. Well, just the song, for instance, the song, That's All. You know, it's, it's a lovely, it stands alone, the music stands alone. Or even the song Misty, you know, the music itself stands alone. And that's, that's what's important to me. Well, certainly Bob Hames and uh, Errol Garner would just glow with that thought. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Gene Harris, it, it's a pleasure to touch base with you and hear you again. Here we are in the Midwest at the Chattanooga Choo Choo and the ghostly images of the Northern Pacific yes. traveling to Seattle. Yes, yes, yes. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It certainly is. Good to meet you and talk with you again. Lay, thank you for having me.